Hello everyone, welcome back to Plumber Parts. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a bitty one. It's a bitty job, it's that bitty time of doing a bloody bathroom refurb. Oh, I've sworn already. Guys, let's get serious now. It's what I do best. We're now going to do some bitty work. The next thing I need to do is get everything ready for the first fix here of our toilet. Now the reason I'm going to be doing it this way round is because I don't want to have to be tiling up to some area that I don't know exists yet and I also don't want to be screwing through my tiles to put the battening down for the box work of the toilet. Let's get on with the video guys. Remember, it's all tight. Also, at the end of this video and due to popular demand, I'll be doing a featured tools list of the tools I use in this video, all of which you'll be able to buy on our Amazon store. I originally intended to do something a little bit naughty, and that was to try and use one system for two toilets, something that's never been done before in the annals of plumbing. And that's probably gonna continue like that because I've decided that's not what I'm gonna do. It's my video, it's my bathroom, I can do what I like. So what I'm gonna do is this instead. We're gonna make up this little beast here. It's gonna sit on here like so, with our water in it. But we're also gonna put some sort of support underneath here. Um, and then, around the front of this as well, we're gonna pop our frame that I've actually used. I wanna put a bidet in this bit here. The bidet valve is gonna go somewhere here, I think, or maybe the problem with it going there is that that means when the toilet seat is up, you won't be able to get to the valve. But anyway, what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to build battening all around this. We're also gonna to have to find a way to first fix our cold and hot up to our valve. We're gonna to have to think about how we're gonna mount the valve. We're gonna to have to think about how we can access all of this equipment here once this is all done. We're gonna to have to think about how we can get all our substrates and pieces like that in nice and firm so when we do tile it we don't end up with cracking in five ten years time and then we're gonna actually have to put the toilet in that's not gonna happen in this particular video the installation of the toilet because that's what we call the second fix this is gonna be the first fix so that's what you're gonna watch us do today let's get on with it but the thing we need to do we need to know for, for a fact that our metal frame is gonna be shrouded in this bit so our metal frame will be here because it's slightly offset and the center of our toilet is going to be about there. Okay, I know this all sort of looks a bit Heath Robinson at the moment. Our button is going to be up here and behind this we will support our system in any way we can so we know that it's going to be able to support that. We also have to think about the fact that our toilet is going to need proper supporting at the back and so is our frame. So we are going to have to tie in pieces of wood across the back here, pieces of timber but also there is some screws that go into the back of the toilet that have a plate on them that usually would go into the back wall. So we're gonna need a piece of wood that runs across the back that will take those screws all the way into the back there, okay? And also this frame has screws that go in the back. And if we actually look at them, I've got some of them here, sets like that, that go back into the wall. So we're gonna need those to tie in to something at the back there as well. We've also got to put up an inch and a half pipe up at the back here to an AAV that will vent our soil pipe. And also, we need to get our cold up here somewhere and our hot as well up over to our bidet valve that will go back into this toilet because we're fitting a bidet toilet here. I mean, just looking at this, you just think it's a work of art. In fact, I'm gonna sign it. Kiss, 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 kiss. Generally though, I know it looks all a bit out of proportion at the moment, this is gonna look absolutely, completely nothing like this when it's done. Hands up who wants the bathroom finished. Me. <laughs> That's what I have to live with. Um, it's just disgraceful. I'm without a cat and two women who want their bathroom done. Don't worry, I don't, don't live with both of them. I don't think I'll be able to cope. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just a little bit of prep work down here. We're just gonna get a little bit of waste done up there. Now, I'm not gonna go all the way up the wall with this yet. I'm just gonna 45 so it goes into the back part of this wall here. It's into that space. So then I can get, start to measure up these, these little bits of wood here so they can go in. That's the thing is it's a little bit tight here. First fix shenanigans as usual, so. Yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. Most of the work that you'll do with uh, PVC is gonna be using a set of nice little cutters like this. You can get these on our Amazon store, but a lot of it as well is gonna be by sight, by eye. You're not gonna be doing like, you know, the best, most accurate cuts ever. <laughs> right then guys, here we are, all going very, very well. Now, what we need to do here is, 
Right, I, I need to put a batten of wood across the back of these, meeting that brick there over to this brick face here, okay? Now, the reason for that is that these brackets at the back here, when we've actually installed our frame, are gonna have to have something to clip to. Now, there's obviously two ways I could do this, and let me just explain them now. I could, if I wanted, I'm gonna put a piece of wood up here, and then I could uh, butt a piece of wood up against that, and that could be the, piece, the bit of wood that goes across here that takes that weight. But that doesn't feel right to me. I think the best way of doing it is actually have a small piece of wood at the bottom here, or just imagine that that's where that is. We do this, we come up to that, then carry on over, and then we batten a piece of wood over the top of that as well. Uh, the first bit we'll do then is get our, our main frame up that goes around on the brickwork here, and then we'll get our little bar across there, and then we'll get our bar across the top as well, because we've got another fixing point at the top, which is, like I said, these bits here have got to be fixed back, and these bits here have also got to be fixed back. Then our next place for fixing will be on the floor, by which time it'll be so well installed, this wheel, it would just be like really really good so it just takes time guys this is the thing it just takes time oh yeah and there's the valve there we'll be talking about that in a sec once we've got these bits of wood in all right well that's getting windy out here so I'll take a fold your clothes right hold on let's hope this doesn't get blown over oh, i love this thing you've seen it in videos before already i'm sure but the best thing about it is because it doesn't have a rail you can push it right up to a wall and then know that you've got a full throw without it touching that wall so you can have it right back out of the way and pop this bit down here and then look it's got a full throw all the way out and back also another nice thing it's got on it as well is little extendy leggy weggy bits which is nice <coughs> beautiful bit of equipment i'm sure you will agree so that bit of wood there, Emily's banging around, um, is going to be our cross beam piece that is going to take um, the main bearers from the back of the toilet. Now the reason I've used 7 by 2 is because it's bigger and therefore it's just got to be better, isn't it? So I'm just going to mark my centre height, put my centre there for that. And then we'll just run a level across for that. Remember, at the end of this video, I'm going to do you a nice big tools list. As you've probably seen there, I like to use a little bit of fixer foam across the backs of the bits of timber that I put up when I'm going onto a brick wall. That's so, when that all sets, it's not really to kind of glue it, but it's just to make sure that it gets a nice even bedding. But we're now moving along nicely with this job. Right then everyone, let's have a quick look at what I've done so far and then I'm gonna try and move on to the next stage. It's all very, like I said, iggledy piggledy, all right? So number one, the first thing I've done. Now, earlier on you probably saw me put a whole beam of wood through here. Now that is gonna create problems in the future because I'm gonna have a shelf across this bit here and, and when I lift that shelf up, I'm gonna want access to the screws up there, which is fine, I can do that these screws here, but I'm going to want access to the tops of my cisterns, so if I've got any problems. With a great big bit of wood through here, I'm not going to get a hand down there, I'm not going to get a hand down there. So this is what we've had to do, we've taken it out and we've, we've got this line here. Solid, absolutely solid. Further on down, as you can see, we've got our two pieces here. Now I could probably just kick this in now, and you get a good idea there uh, of what I'm doing and, and how I'm going to get this installed. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to build out the front part of our frame down the front here, across the top. We're getting there slowly guys, it's taking time. So let's get this frame on now. Right then guys, so this is the stage we're at at the moment. There's a couple of things we've got to do. So number one, I'm putting a Vitra B down here and I've, I know that I need to put my valve somewhere here and this is what the valve looks like. Some of you who've watched our videos on Vitra stuff 
would have seen this already in the past. Now we need to sit this valve probably about this height uh, and obviously it doesn't quite width there so we're going to have to notch out some of this beam of wood here which isn't quite fixed in yet. But also we've got our cold at the back, we've got the hot down there that we need to get up and over roughly to our right position before this piece of wood is actually installed. After that we've also got to make sure because I'm taking out the bespoke Vitra system and that it's not because, you know, I don't want to use it or anything like that. It's that before I did all this job, before I started doing this, before we got, before I got any of the Vitra stuff into the studio to film, uh, I'd already done the ensuite next door and that I'd already bought the infrared round sensors for that. And I just want to use them up, otherwise they're just here, you know? Um, so there uh, Armistead shanks those sensors and they look like this, I'll show you. You can have a little look now. Come into my, my poo room. <laughs> And if we give this a buzz, there we go. Oh, well, yummy, yummy. So they work really, really well. I'm really pleased with them. And uh, I'm going to have them just linear throughout the house like that. So that's basically why we're doing that. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that my system height here is actually slightly higher than this one, purely because the one that was attached on there was attached on this frame and there's some holes at the back. So I know that the sort of top of this, top of the water level would have been about here. So it's just a little bit higher up. And what does water level equate? It equates head pressure, which would then also equate the, uh, the speed at which the flush happens and how strong the flush is. Now remember when we did the review of the Vitra toilet and I'll be talking about it later when we pop it in here later on in this series, we can take out a small insert at the back of the toilet to sort of adjust the flush and all that sort of thing. So look, what we're going to do now, and it's hard for me to sort of talk about it constantly throughout the time. I know you guys are watching sort of over my shoulder as I do this work. So we've got a little bit of pipe work to be doing in here now, and you'll be watching us do it in a minute. <laughs> Right, loads of planning there. So let's just whip this out of the way for a minute. So we've got our hot pipe coming out of here. We're just taking that off. We've got a cold there. So we've got to make that. We've got our, our, our line for where I want this to go is pretty much here. And I've also measured a line back depth wise where I know the depth of my valve can be. Uh, and then that'll be, that'll leave us enough shroud out the front here to get a decorative cover on all that sort of stuff. Eagle-eyed among you will probably notice I'm still using my lovely Ox ratchet cutters to do a bit of pipe cutting. Uh, there you go, look, I've now got a nice little back bit there for our valve, but also that ties in to the metal plate and also then ties in yet again to our main frame. So I'm actually adding anchorage areas for our toilet frame and all that sort of stuff. Now it's just a matter of nice simple bit of pipe work. I didn't show you the solder here because I've slightly burnt that bit of wood. Naughty me. Uh, but there we go, it's all coming along absolutely spiffy. Bit of pipe work done up there. I've gone further up with that pipe because the system that's going to go in front of this is going to be a bit higher up. Uh, and then down here we've got the first fix done for this. I'm just going to make sure everything's on just by I'm trying to get this under it. Great, great idea. Oh yeah, Christ, that is definitely on. Okay, so I've just brought the bog up here because we're kind of we're using the Vitra B Day toilet here with the B-Day insert there. We've got our valve first fix there. I just want to know where I can bring my pipe round to. But also I know that we're not going to be having this sort of special um, orangey plastic connection bit here, which is really good on the Vitra thing because it holds the, the pipe in place purely because we've got a T-section right at the back there for our waste. Uh, and what we're going to have to do is use an offset multi-quick or an offset connector to just swing this up so it's central and in the right position for the outlet of the toilet. But I've just brought the toilet up here to make sure that I've got my studs in the right two holes. Yeah. I think the one thing that we're going to struggle with the most in this is access. So uh, I'm a great believer in when you've done any work, you should think about a hundred years time is someone going to have to come in and do any work to this. Therefore, they're going to need access to it, aren't they? Um, so what we're going to do for that, right, we, I mean, the top lid's going to be removable anyway, because it will just be a laid on um, bit of lid. But this front panel, that, that doesn't stop help you. If you've just got that little top lid entry up there, 
that doesn't help you get down to the connections at the bottom of the toilet down there if you've got a leak on the flush unit. Therefore, we're gonna have to have a front panel that comes off or lifts off or or has a hinge on it. Now, I'm more inclined to go for the hinge um, arrangement. Because this panel's gonna be tiled, it's gonna be really heavy, and those hinges are gonna take quite a lot of the weight of that when you lift it off. So, the problem is, it's going to be tiled, like I said. But I want my tiles to line up with the tiles that go around the bath. I don't know what height they're gonna be until the bath is in. I don't know what height the bath is gonna be until the floor is tiled because I'm doing something a bit different. I don't want to guess the floor height. I want to get it exactly right. So I'm going to tile the floor first. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel and you want to see what's going to happen here, subscribe, hit the bell and the notification, and then you'll get notifications when I upload a video. Otherwise you're going to miss out and you'll never know. <laughs> what I'm going to do now anyway is we're going to just get the, the bit for the water system popped in. We're going to put that a bit higher up. Then we're going to get that pipe round and sticking out in the right place for the toilet bit down here. Also then I'll put in our little inch and a half Durgo which will go in there. I'm also going to put a Durgo under the bath as well. I like Durgos, they're a good idea. They allow things to drain really really quickly um, and they help everything vent nicely so it's really really good. So anyway, pegging on in it, pegging on boy. So I'm installing my own little mini shelf. Now, as you know, I'm putting it a little bit higher than the other system, but there's also a nice little advantage to that, is that when I put my access door in, I'll be able to see that bottom joint of the system nicely. Now also I'm putting these two little bits of wood out here to add extra stability to where our system's gonna be seated. But also, those bits of wood, guess what? They're gonna tie into the back bit of wood, and also I'm gonna screw them into the side of the frame. So yet again, we've got more anchorage points for the toilet frame. It's just rock solid, this. If there's ever a nuclear war, I'm gonna try and hide myself inside this box work, because I think I'd survive it. Yes. We've got the um, system on there now, and actually it's sitting there quite nicely. Um, I probably will still just pop a little screw through here. I'm gonna pop a little bit of packing just on the side there, just so it doesn't keep moving around. Also, the hole I've had to re-drill, because if the hole was on that side, it's uh, the little bit of metal gets in the way. Um, also, I'm using a different type of valve. I think this is going to be okay in here. I need a little bit of adapting. Um, but I'm using that because it's got a nice brass shank on it. Brass shanks are the way to go. We all love a brass shank. Right, we've got a little bit of higgledy piggledy pipe work to do here, but you know I love a little bit of that. We love all that, don't we? That's beautiful. And that can just pull up to there. Just a couple of nips with the. I don't know why I'm doing it in here, I might as well take it out. One of those days and it's Monday, that's the thing. Um, and then we've got the difference between the two. One is obviously 15 mil both ends in compression. And this one here is 15 mil one end to half inch flat, which is why usually these come with a fibre washer. But I've taken the fibre washer off and popped my own rubber washer on. Because rubber washers are miles better. You don't have to do them up as tight, they get a better seal. They're just better. So we'll pop that on there. Yeah, so now I'm ready to do the pipe work onto that now. Because this isn't fully fixed yet, we've got big screws to put there, there, big ones at the back, a couple of side ones here, two at the bottom, one at the side there. It's not gonna go anywhere. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly get soldering up. Uh, another thing as well is, I know some of you are gonna say, oh, someone could put a screw through that wire up there to the fan. Sorry, there's no other way for me to do it, but I would like to say one thing. The person who helped me choose this fan, I'm a fan of his channel, he's a fan of my channel as well, is Charlie D.I. White. I'll leave a link to his fan video below. It's not his only fans, I just want to make a joke about only fans. Cheers Charlie, I love you very much. Sooner or later you're going to have to come over here for a beer and a chit chat about DIY. Right then, so, we've got a little bit of pad work to do. I love doing the pad work, baby. Now for those of you who watch my video on tips on how to do a bit of pipe bending, you might remember me cutting some centimetre lengths in my dies here, y'all. I'm going to try and get this in a position where you can sort of see what I'm doing. I understand that it's difficult for you to see what I'm doing. And there's so much shit in here. <laughs> I don't know where I could put my camera so you can see it. Let's just put you there and hope it doesn't fall down. On the side of my benders here, I've got 30 degrees times by 2, 45 degrees times by 1.4, and 60 degrees times by 1.2. I'm not I'm not timesing the degrees by that, and I only have these here just to remind me of this. So I'm going to get a pencil, we're just going to mark 
where that sits into the former there. And look, my former's got little notches on it all the way down that denote 10 millimeter spreads. All right, so I'm gonna pop it in here and I'm just gonna pinch everything up very quickly with a little caveat that my the end of my former or the end of my dial, whatever you wanna call it, and the end of my actual bender piece here is in that right position. We've got a 30 millimeter difference between the edge of the pipe and the edge of the other bit of pipe. We know if we're using a 30 degree bend, we need to times that by two. 30 times by two is 60. So I count across here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Make my next mark there. So we'll come to that in a minute. And then we'll just pull my 30 degree bend first. So let's just pull that. I've got my 30 degree mark on the side, 30 there. We've already got our other mark on here, so let's just... Da, 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 da. I've done a full video on this already, guys, so, you know, if you haven't seen it, then what's your own bloody fault, innit? You're never gonna learn, are you? If that's a cat. And we get that mark there on the front of the former just there. Make sure that's position there and pull another 30 degree bend and there we have a mini set Now I'm just gonna screw the living poo back uh, out of this frame. Using my little backhoe set to do this. Another thing I do with the backhoe set is I sometimes put the end of the socket extension in a drill just to get it wanged in there. But guys, by the time I've done this, this thing is so fixed now, it's near moving anywhere, I tell me. It's not gonna go anywhere. It doesn't matter who sits on it, how big they are, how small they are. You know, Nicholas Stojan can sit on it, it'd be fine. Right, we've done all that. We're at a stage now where we want to get the waist in. Now, it's a few days later. I'm wearing different clothes, probably. Got called out. Uh, Emily's mum didn't have any heating. Had to sort that out. <laughs> uh, also had to go and price a water softener up, which I might film, actually. Uh, I haven't done a water softener video in a little while, so it might be a good idea to shout that one up. Uh, what else? There's a couple of other jobs I've had to do, but they're all in the middle of this, this bathroom thing that Emily is really happy is taking so long to do. No. <laughs> So this is where we are at the moment, right? So we've got a, we've got our bit in there. Okay, a little bit here, willy piggledy. But this all moves all right. Actually, have I got that switched off? Yeah, I have. Uh, I did test the fill up on that. We've got our waste pipe in. Now this is the bit we're gonna talk about in a minute because this is what we're not going to do. But we've got our flush pipe in. We've got everything on the back here. Look, it's really well fixed down. Fixed down up here. Everything is just really coming along nicely. Um, so look, what I want to talk about is these two points here are fixed points for our toilet. So for us to know what height we want this to be at, we should measure from these fixed points here on the toilet down to where the waste comes out on there. Now we can do that on this toilet because the toilet is here. There's where those two fixed points go through. We can measure across from here down and then find out exactly where we want the top of our waste pipe to be. The problem that we have though is that the inlet right at the back of the stack is lower, quite a lot lower than the outlet of the toilet. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can buy an offset multi-quick like this. And multi-quicks generally sell uh, two sizes of offset. I think this is about, probably about a 20 mil ops offset. Or you can fit the one that we've got in the back there, which is about a 50 mil offset. But we've got a bit of a problem. That means I've got one, two, three, four joints behind the toilet for the toilet waste. Now, whatever happens here, whatever we do here, it's not gonna be the way of doing it. It's gonna be somewhat trying to polish a poo. As Jack Aubrey might say in the Patrick O'Brien books, the lesser of two weevils. I could do that or I could use a flexible multi-quick. Now, I don't like using flexible multi-quick so much because number one, I hate accordions. Number two, they get lots of poo stuck in the little rigidy bit. But the thing is, is that it means there's only one joint at each end and that to me is better than having four joints in there all flapping about all over the bloody place that I can't get at. Another thing that's good is that when we, finish, when we do this, we're, we're gonna be able to get to those joints after this is all finished because I'm gonna have a big 
door that comes down off this on a hinge or maybe goes up, I haven't decided yet, but that is gonna be accessible. There's gonna be, if there's a problem down there, I'm gonna be able to get in there and inspect the problem, fix the problem. It's gonna be a bit of a pain in the bum, but it doesn't matter, at least I'll be able to get there. A lot of the times you have to cut the toilet out and all that sort of stuff and it's a bum hole. So we've got the toilet waste in now. I'm afraid I wasn't able to use a concertina because the sweep of the concertina wasn't tight enough for us to do that and miss the bottom plate of this metal frame that we've got here holding the toilet. So I've had to use a small insert, one of those 50 mil offsets and then another extending piece. Uh, and then that extending piece is then gonna go into the final multi-quick. I mean, it won't, it won't leak, but it's just more joints than I'd like. And I'd say to any of you guys out there, if you can have less joints, have less joints. So what I'm gonna quickly do now is we're gonna put on our little air admittance valve. Uh, we're just gonna pop it up here out of the way, but the first thing I'm gonna do is just glue it on because it's all solvent weld this stuff. Um, easy to do, solvent weld guys. We all know how to do it, but the reason I'm putting this in is just to allow everything to drain away nice and easily. Uh, sometimes uh, problems with drainage, especially like ju slow drainage, can occur because there aren't enough of these in. Now basically this is just a Durgo, it's what you call it, which is a brand name, but it's an air admittance valve. So what it will do, it will let air in, so if we've got water falling down this pipe, it's effectively sucking air in, um, and then when that stops happening, then it will, uh, then the valve shuts, it doesn't let any smell out. So I'm just gonna get that glued in now and I've got, I can't find any buddy inch and a half clips anywhere. So I might have to clip it up in the next video, but I will clip it up. I don't like, you know, I'm like guys with clips. So then guys, I think we have pretty much got as far as we can in this video, whereby we're talking about the boxing and doing the first fix for the toilet and this bidet valve. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I hope that it's given you an idea as to the thought processes that go through my bonkers brain while I'm trying to do this sort of work. And sometimes the kind of polishing of the turd that you have to do while you're doing it as well. I think you'd agree, it looks absolutely brilliant. It's gonna be safe. It's gonna be great to use. Now, before you get anywhere though guys, and if you're interested in the tools that I use, let's have a look at this week's Tools of Note. Okay, it's time for Tools of Note. Now look at that lovely Vito Pro Pack bag there. Also, I realized that I haven't got my little Hardy Backer heat mat that's laying down in the garage at the moment. It's obligatory if you're ever gonna buy this bag off our Amazon store that you have to buy some Carla to get those big bags going. Obviously, I used loads in this video my Rothenberger Superfire 2 torch, the best torch you can get for soldering with small nib on it, plus my 22mm fluctuator with Laco flux inside. I use a 22mm one on 15 and 22mm pipe, doesn't really matter. To tighten up the frame onto the wood, I use my little backhoe set, stuffed with other random bits that I found along the way. Then, after that, something that featured prominently in this video, was my Bosch Little Drill. This is a drill driver, this is not the impact driver. The great thing about the drill driver that Bosch do that you can get in an Amazon store, oh yes, is that you can convert it over into a standard chuck drill and also a really handy 90 degree angle drill for getting in those nooks and crannies. And of course, I think the head of the show, the leader of the show, the thing that stole the show is my Bosch chop saw. Doesn't have a rail on it, so you can put it right back up to a wall. And look how much I love it there. Obviously, it's getting a good old shag. The Starlock oscillating tool as well is absolutely quality for just notching out little bits like I had to do on that inch and a half. Plus, my SDS drill that I like to think is a machine gun. Love that as well. It's got the 4 amp hour battery on here, but I usually pop the 8 amp hour on it. I've got the 12 amp hour, 8 amp hour, and 4 amp hour batteries for use on my Bosch tools. I hope you found today's video interesting and that it's helped you out guys. Please hit the thanks button if you think I've helped you out on how to do any of these things today. It really supports the channel and helps me to make more videos as well. Join the Ale Army if you get a chance too and I'll see you in our next Back in the Bathroom video. There's loads of videos coming up on Plumber Parts and on Times with James, my other channel as well. So check that out and hit the subscribe button and the bell for both of those channels. See you in the next video guys. Remember to hold tip.